My name is Al Worden. Um, I was uh, U.S. Air Force, uh, seconded to NASA for a period of time. Uh, I was on the backup crew for Apollo 9, or I'm sorry, the support crew for Apollo 9, the backup crew for Apollo 12, and I flew as a command module pilot on Apollo 15. Uh, we launched in uh, July of 1971, 36 years ago. Well, support crew uh, basically does all of the menial tasks that the prime crew or the backup crew don't want to do. Uh, they do all the paperwork and they go get lunch and get coffee and stuff like that. Uh, and they do most of the spacecraft preparation getting ready for launch. Uh, of course, the backup crew trains along with the prime crew. Uh, they train in the same way. Because if somebody, like on Apollo 13, if somebody gets taken off the flight, then they have to step in. So basically they're trained pretty much along with the prime crew. And of course the prime crew makes the flight. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a fairly extensive hierarchy of crews uh, back in those days that it, that it required to get one flight off. And on the Apollo 15, I I don't recall any problems with restraints. I, I I'd have to check, but I don't recall us having any problems with restraints. The only we had very very few problems on our flight. Uh, the only real problem we had was a water leak that we had to take care of. But uh, outside of that, we really uh, had very little trouble. I, d I don't recall, I don't know where you got the restraint thing, but... The mission, the post -mission report today, I was looking for it, right? it was uh, to rebuild one of the sort of straps you know, in the line. So, uh, I don't I'm getting to a point where I forget a lot of things now. <laughs> um, is it correct you did the, the, you did the first um, deep space trans -earth? That's correct. I did the first what? Well, we'll call it spacewalk or EVA, whatever you want. Uh, yes, I did the first uh, one. In fact, uh, I was uh, uh, even today. I've done the furthest spacewalk from Earth. Uh, the reason for the spacewalk was that uh, we had several. We had two very large cameras that we carried along in this in in our um, service module. Uh, one was a high-resolution camera that we used to take very very. Uh, good pictures of the lunar surface and the other was a mapping camera. Those two film cassettes had to be removed from the service module brought into the command module so we could get them back through the atmosphere. So that was the reason for the extravehicular activity. I got outside, went and got those film canisters and brought it back in. And uh, training for that EVA, did you do, do a lot of training in a water tank? Or? Did some training in the water tank, uh, but the really good training, the best training was in a zero-g airplane. See, there's a problem with a water tank. Uh, the, the large film canister was uh, about 90 pounds. Very, it's quite large, probably 28, 30 inches in diameter, and it was about 12 inches thick, it weighed about 90 pounds. To get the training in the water tank, you have to make everything as neutrally buoyant as you can. So a 90 pound canister turns into a shape the same size but made out of Teflon with a lot of holes in it to reduce the weight. So yes, you can practice the procedures, but the dynamics uh, of the operation underwater, they don't work. So the really good training I got was in a zero-g airplane where I actually had a 90 pound canister. And you were in a suit during a parabolic dive? In the suits, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, it is what we call a zero-g airplane. Um, you only get 25 or 30 seconds at a time. So you have to, if it's a long procedure, you have to cut it into 30-second segments. And sometimes it takes a lot of parabolas to do that. And uh, you were a command module pilot? Right. So you were in the command module while um, Scott and... Irwin were on the lunar surface, right. Right. I stayed in orbit by myself for the three days that they were down on the surface, right. You had a lot of tasks to complete during those three days? Had enough to do that um, I probably averaged uh, maybe four hours sleep in a day because I was so busy doing things the rest of the time. Yeah. So there was a lot to do, yeah. yeah. So you, you didn't miss them too much? I didn't miss them at all, no. <laughs> they were on their own down there. <laughs>